YouTube channel. My name is Scott Schaefer and today we're going to start working on some uh, power for the new shop. Uh, if you have a shop of your own you know how awesome it is to have a receptacle right where you want it. So if you're working with uh, in a building that has concrete walls or brick walls or basically any kind of finished wall that you don't want to that you can't get into the studs. In this video I'm going to show you how to install EMT pipe the proper way and uh, set your boxes the proper way so that you can run the kind of system that you want to run. In the next video after this one I'm going to show you how to uh, pull wire and uh, the proper way to wire up your receptacles. So we'll see that in the other video. Go ahead and click on this link if you want to go see how to wire stuff up. Otherwise sit right here we're going to put some pipe on the wall. This is my new sub panel. The pipe on the left is uh, the, the pipe I'm working on right now so you can see the little 90 with the kick. Uh, to get up to the joist and I've got it attached to the joist. Now one thing I have to point out here is that I don't have it supported within one foot of the panel which I should and I'll probably get around to that at some point but for now um, this is good enough. So anyway we're coming along and uh, we hit our first box. This is going to be a receptacle. My charging station I have my chargers up on top of my cabinet here so this will be a charging station. And then I come out of that box and I run across the ceiling, hit a 90, come down, and this is my first receptacle for uh, my bigger tools. My box is a four square box, which means it's four inches long and four, in or four inches wide and four inches tall, and then it's uh, two and five eighths deep or something like that. Anyway, it's the deeper of the two options. Uh, and I like to have it deep, that way you have more room to shove your wires in there and, uh, and not have to worry about uh, hitting wires with your screws or just trying to cram a bunch of wires in there. Just easier to use a deeper box, so I definitely recommend that. And then I've got my straps. You always want to strap it within a foot of the box in all directions. And then on your run of pipe, you want to have a strap at least every 10 feet. This is only a six foot pipe, so I've strapped it again within a foot of the next box. And we're going to keep going. And there's my last box before we turn the corner. I'm going to put one more box at the end of the line. Not quite this far, but anyway, this is the existing crap that we're taking out. So we're just going to do a 90 degree bend right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the wall all the way to the outside of my box, and that's 29 inches. So how do you bend the 90 and have the back of it at 29 inches? What we're going to do is we're going to, because we're using a half inch bender, we're going to deduct five inches from our 29 inches. So we're going to mark it at 24 inches. And the pipe bender should have it written on there, five inches to stub. And that's only for 90 degree bends. So you see my mark here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in the bender and there's an arrow on the bender right here. And I'm going to put that mark right on that arrow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm on a flat surface. I'm going to use my foot and I'm going to push down. Putting pr downward pressure on the shoe is more important than pulling back on the handle. You just pull back on the handle to make it move, but your pressure needs to be on the, on the shoe. And you're just going to bend it back. So you have 90 degrees. Now just to make sure that it's 90 degrees, uh, you can either just eyeball it, and sometimes that's good enough, or you can put it up against the wall, because the wall should be 90 degrees to the floor, or you can use a level. Now the next step before we put it on the wall is we need a little offset. And the reason for that is because the connector on the box is not flat against the wall like the pipe is going to be. So you need to be able to bump the pipe out a little bit so it gets into that, um, that connector. So it probably would have been easier for me to do this before I bent the 90 degree bend, but in any case it's a half inch pipe so it's pretty easy to work with. If you're working with three quarter or bigger, I definitely bend these offsets before you bend your 90. So I apologize I didn't do that. Do it in that order. 
So it's gonna be in the corner like this. The box is here, so it's gonna come out and then bend this way. So the first bend I wanna make is closest to the tip. So that means I need to bend it on this side of the pipe going that way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit it on the floor here. And we're gonna put the shoe like an eighth of an inch from the tip of the pipe. And you wanna make sure that your, that your bender is parallel or in line with the rest of the pipe so you don't dog leg it. And I'm just gonna do a little tiny bend, not much. And then I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna bend it in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna put my, the front of my shoe near my first bend. Okay, and you wanna just make sure that you bend it so that it's straight again which it looks pretty good. All right, so I've got the connector already on here and the screw is facing me, so it'll be easy to tighten it. Okay, so now that I've got it in here, I'm gonna get it level. So we need to lift the other end up to get our, our offset the right direction. And because the wall is brick with the grout lines, it's gonna be really easy to tell if the pipe isn't level and uh, you, your friends are gonna make fun of you when they come over and they see what terrible work you did uh, not using a level. So definitely uh, definitely worth getting it right the first time. Did anybody else notice that I was wearing safety glasses on top of my head and not on my eyes where they should supposed to be? If so, why didn't you say something? All right, so now we're gonna put a coupling on. A coupling uh, puts a couple of pipes together. That's how you can remember that. Coupling puts a couple of pipes together. A connector connects pipes to boxes. So I'm gonna go about, gonna go about 80 inches. So I'm gonna measure out 80 inches. This is a scrap piece of pipe that is 78 inches. You know what, that's close enough. I don't need to waste a 10 foot stick just to get me two extra inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this pipe. If I was gonna have to cut it, this is what I would use. Just the uh, Sawzall with a metal cutting blade. That's all you need. Just be careful with it. So now that I have a straight piece to work with, I'll show you how to properly bend an offset. So you wanna set it in the shoe. With just a little bit peeking out. About an eighth of an inch or so and you're just gonna put slight downward pressure as close to the shoe as possible. If I push back here with my left hand, it's gonna bow the whole pipe. So I need to put most of my pressure right here to make sure that it bends on this radius. Okay, so it's not much, just a little bit. And you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna move it back so the front of the shoe is right behind your first bend. And then you wanna make sure that it's straight, so kind of twist it around. Make sure that it's pointing up or forward or whatever you want to call it. And then do it again. And do exactly the same bend. And you can kind of eyeball it to see if it, uh, if it looks good. And it does look good. And it's not dog-legged. That's a pretty good offset right there. I'm gonna stick it in the coupling and then turn it so that your offset is coming out. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just gonna tighten everything down. Tighten that and then I'm gonna tighten my coupling. Now we're ready to put the box on there. So again, I'm reusing a box that was uh, in a different location. Uh, so I'm gonna start out by putting the connector on. So it's gonna go on like this. So I want to use this hole. I want the screw to face me. Kind of get it close by hand so that it's almost facing the right direction. And then I'm going to use line mins or you can use channel locks just to get it that last little twist. And we're just going to stick it on there. Okay, voila. Final step is to cap the hole that I'm not gonna use anymore. 
So I just want to show you what this looks like. And they call these knockout seals or KO caps. You can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Ace Hardware probably. And you just push it in, just like that. Almost forgot. There, now I'm done. All right, so there's a lot of different bending techniques. You know, there's offsets, there's rolling offsets, depending on what you're, you're needing to accomplish with the pipe. Uh, I hope I'll get around to another video of, to show you how to bend those different bends. So if I've posted that video, you'll see a link right here and you can watch that and learn a little bit more about bending pipe. Everything I've done here is to code, the NEC code. If you have any questions about the code, you can Google it in the search results. Just look for something that says NEC code or NEC charts or something like that and, and use that. Or you can always call up your electrician friend and ask him. All right guys, so now the next step is gonna be pulling wire and wiring up my receptacles. So to watch that video again, here's that link. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. The Log Furniture How To. The most all-inclusive site on the net for log and rustic furniture, fixtures and decor. That's logfurniturehowto.com.